Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sorry, I was a little disturbed to know that we are just 100 minutes late. So I don't know if you can calculate how much sugar will drop in 100 minutes. I thought I was going to be the last speaker, but now I understand there are two more before you actually go off to your bread and butter. So hold on. You, uh, we are, they will actually be providing you with some sugar tablets so that you can keep yourself up. Anyway, uh, the topic for today, I'll try to limit it to maybe 15 or maybe less because Dr. Junaid Zafar would actually be taking over the complications of things. So management of hypertension beyond blood pressure control, this is a little token of my introduction, trained in UK and at the moment uh, privately running into the Hamid Latif Hospital. Doctor ke baad jab gaya na blood pressure ka patient, aapne pehle sunna hi hoga. Unne kaha doctor sab hypertension badiya. Unne kaha tension na sona nahi hai. To usne kaha ye tension to baad bethi hai. To uske saath sona nahi hai. To if you are have MIL blood pressure or mother-in-law blood pressure, then there is nothing I can do. I think you should have thought before that. Anyway, just to kick off without wasting much time, this is a self-explanatory picture which basically tells you it's not just the pre -hyper. That is where we actually have to focus before we actually move on to hypertension and to the end organ damage leading to death. Bad news. Just quickly to give you the feedback on to the statistical value, about 1.13 billion people at this point in time are actually suffering from blood pressure. And I think there are a lot more who have blood pressure but they don't know. But this is the figure which has been actually quoted. The most unfortunate part, just like my yesterday's presentation, the two-thirds of the people having the blood pressure come from the low middle income. blood pressure sugar So I think this is what we really have to look into it, that the treatment is financially acceptable. That's the most important thing. So one out of the two people with hypertension, they, they actually don't know they have it. Okay, this is, uh, if you were around yesterday, this is a repetition of the yesterday's the picture, but the figures are different. I showed you, I shared you with the diabetic number of deaths, and this picture now is a hypertension leading to cause 10.4 million deaths every year. This is a lot. So bearing in mind that we are actually hungry, and so am I, and you are also, so we'll just give you the salient messages and carry on as it is. Background rationale and associate cofactor. Musibat ek dhava nahi aati jab shadi hoti na saaliyan saale bhi aandhe ne. So is karke this is the way it goes on. With hypertension, make sure you do not have a core risk factor. That's extremely important. Many a time people stick to one part of the findings and they ignore the other one. And this is terribly important. Dyslipidemia, diabetes, smoking, and all these put together either singly or collectively basically leads to the endothelial damage across the body. It could be small vessel, medium vessel, or large vessel. But mother is only one, generally speaking, and it is the central obesity. It's primarily the common soil hypothesis. So in saro ki maa jo unsi hai na wo pet ki chhed biya, generally speaking. It's starting with the insulin resistance. Some people can actually kick off with the hypertension, somebody with the diabetes, somebody together. But take it from me, if you have diabetes or hypertension, one or the other, 80% of the people down the line will get the both, and in the background, the dyslipidemia running. And if you are a smoker, then I think Allah offers. Okay, emerging concepts. The hypertensive phenotypes are like this. It's not just the blood pressure itself, it's the elevation, it's the circadian rhythm, you have a difference coming up, many a time you will see the people have a lowish blood pressure when they wake up, but as the time passes by, by the evening that goes up again. But first thing in the morning, they could have a sympathetic alert and could go up again. So this is, as far as it stays, it's okay. But if you are heading for a structural damage, then the, the ball is actually going to be in the other people code, especially to the nephrologist and the cardiologist. So the structure damage could be starting from the small artery to the large artery, to left ventricular hypertrophy, and then to the target organ damage. So I think the point I'm trying to make it here is, don't just look into the number of your blood pressure readings, you've got to really look into it, your cardiac status, your renal status. 
And then in the background, you have a metabolic effects like dyslipidemia and impaired glucose tolerance. Many of the people, you actually have to look into all these entities at the same time when you're treating them. So we increasingly manage that hypertension is more than the blood pressure. The other most important, other than the heart, as I've already said, the left ventricle hypertension, is the kidney. Many a times people are focusing on, you know, generally we play the game of number. Okay, if it is 200, bring it down. If your blood sugar is so high, bring it down. That's not, that's not just enough. Just the take home message is that if you have a protein urea slip, spilling out in your urine or a microalbumin urea, your risk of subsequent death from the from the kidney involvement is as high as having a cardiovascular involvement. So please, the take home message, at the practical take home message at this point in time is when you look into the hypertensive patient, it's extremely important, just ask for the protein urea. And this is how the journey when the blood pressure starts with the kidney injury. So you could kick off with the microalbumin, with the, uh, with the profile of the common uh, this, uh, protein urea, and then a decreasing EGFR and a rising creatinine. And that is what it happens at the end of the day that many of the patients actually get the, the problem with the target organs. Journey of a hypertensive patient needing early investigation. You know, the most important thing is in, obviously I've actually talked between, between UK and here. Here we do not have a general follow-up or an initial examination until such time that we come up with the symptom. My suggestion would be, if you have a family history, or if you are obese, and you have no complaint at all, I think you should still, after the age of 40, you should go and see your doctor to make sure that your parameters are well within the normal limit. So this is how it starts. You could start with the pre-hypertension, leading on to the hypertension, and then it is the clinical disease. So you may be sitting for at least 10 years before you start to have the clinical disease. And that is the duration of the disease itself. So the CVD risk actually increases as the time passes by. That's a very important, actually this slide is enough for you to take message and then you can actually move around whatever you want to do. So, so the burden of the drugs, you could start off from somewhere here and then the one drug, two drugs, three drugs and a lot more. And at the end of the day you would see that there is the the burden comes up onto the system. If you are young, this is what you get. You have lipid disorder, glucose disorder, blood pressure, no target organ damage, and if you leave it further on, this is what you start to get with the target organ. All the target organs start to get involved. So my point here is, try to nip in somewhere over here, and then you do the workup and find out what are the target organs which are. So it's not just a matter of actually controlling the blood pressure, actually it's doing the workup of the every patient. And that's the, the warning sign for the patients who basically are towards the tail end of, the, of their life then. So in the background, you are, when you're treating with the hypertension, you have a metabolic syndrome coming. There's a, there's a huge symposia coming up on the 18th of uh, this month, and I think it is the prevention of cardiology, including with the metabolic syndrome as well. So generally speaking, the, you must identify and intervene early and most of the patients, when they're first seen, they would need two drugs to control. And I'm going to share with you a data of the LIFE, VALUE, and ASCOT trial. Because of the limitations of time, I cannot go into the detail, but the message is very clear, that up to 80% of the patients would need at least two, group of, two drugs to reach their optimal blood, blood pressure level. Just one, another example, in elderly patients, when you're treating hypertension, please do take this standing blood pressure. Many a time, they will have a normal controlled blood pressure when they are sitting, and then you hear a bang does in the bathroom, and you find out that Chacha Ji is down with the broken leg. So I think standing blood pressure is extremely important. So combination with the versus monotherapy, this is the figure which is basically showing you if you're using the just monotherapy, you could actually be looking into the 30% of the control, but if you do the right from the beginning to two drugs, generally speaking, it's not the rule of thumb for 100%, it's individualized, but generally speaking, if you do the two drugs combination, almost 80% of the patients would have the control of their blood pressure. 
And this is a wonderful, a very quick slide to show you what options do you have. The option you could have is starting from the beta blockers to diuretic, diuretics to ACE inhibitors, and then to your calcium channel blockers, and then you have an ARB. Generally, when we see the patient, we assess individually. If somebody is stress-induced, you obviously would like to put them on the beta block or something. But overall, this is what is there. You, you could actually have the combination if you're going to protect your target organ, calcium channel, and the ARB. You might be wondering why I'm not circling the ACE inhibitor. Most of the time, people who are coming from the villages or far-flung areas, you put them on ACE inhibitors, they would generally have many times a cough which could actually disturb them. But at the moment, the data which is coming up and in the market, the combination is between calcium channel and the ARBs. So what are the calcium channel and the ARB generally which has got a backup data is with the amlodipine and valsartan. So the BP lowering effects and efficacy is their goal, and you can actually build up the, from the low dose and slightly go up then. So generally, it is the 10 milligram amlodipine you could go. You could have a swelling of your feet, a very common complaint. It's not a complication, a very common complaint. Patient will come and say, doctor, don't please put them on diuretic. It won't work anyway. But if you combine them, with the ARB or ACE inhibitor, that swelling is a large possibility it will go down. But if somebody is LD, you tell them to keep your feet up and then carry on. Because this combination is not just the blood pressure control, it is the target organ safety as well. Normally, you could be using all certain starting from 80 milligram to go to 160, but there are obviously people who would be needing even higher dosage. And if the blood pressure is not under control, then you could actually be using some more add-on drugs like diuretics or beta blocker on the top. But as I said, generally, you would need two drugs, and top of the line, the combination of the two drugs generally remains is the calcium channel and the wall sartan. Goal of the therapy is to reduce cardiac and renal morbidity and mortality. None of your patient renal profile will start to settle down until such time you have their blood pressure, their diabetes and their lipids under well under control and that is the only way and then also reduce the weight that's the only way you could actually have the less burden onto the target organs especially the liver especially the kidney and the heart my message to you all is if somebody is not under control of the renal profile the creatinine is going up the egfr is going down go back and look into the status of the regulation and the control of their diabetes and blood pressure and, and adjust it accordingly. The target to treat for the blood pressure generally, when if the patients are not having any diabetes or something, then the, the, the level is something like 140 over 90, and when people are having the diabetes or chronic kidney disease, it should be 130 over 80. But make sure, again, as I said, please do look into this standing blood pressure, especially for the elderly people. They have an autonomic neuropathy and they can suddenly drop down. The other thing is, if patient goes into the emergency room with a blood pressure of 210 or something, this habit or this practice of putting capotin under the tongue is not validated anywhere. It's extremely dangerous. So I think if that is the situation, then you have to really look into and work up the patient very carefully to find what else we could do. But please do not put capotin under the tongue because they can collapse right there in front of you. So my extremely important message here is that you should not be putting these sort of things sublingually. So the winning combination, generally speaking, is a wall certain and amylodin against the word of the hypertension. And I would simply say the time is the most important factor. You leave it unattended for a long time, you start to have the structural damage coming up. So right from the beginning, you look into the figures, total holistic approach, and the answer is A, B, C, D, E, and F. A is the A1C, B is blood pressure, C is cholesterol, C is cigarette, D is drugs, which are cardio-renal friendly, 
E is exercise. What else is E? E is ECG, and Dr. Janezafar is here, and E is echocardiogram. And what is F for? Not father-in-law. F is for foot. All these patients, blood pressure or diabetes, please look into their feet very carefully. You could lose their feet just like this because they have a peripheral neuropathy and they would not know they are actually sitting on a problem with their feet. So the time is most important and if you are not picking up your hypertensive patient and doing the workup at the right time, I think you are going to end up in a lot of problems. And my take home message would be, must pick up hypertension early and intervene accordingly. The earlier you pick up and the earlier you keep it under control, the best is thing. Otherwise, be ready to pay the price. So with this thing coming up, I think the message is there, I'll dot on, absolutely. I think I couldn't be any perfect than that. So it's the time for, well, so it's time for lunch or tea. So I thank you, Edward. The 15 minutes is just enough time to give you the baseline. Thank you.